Hello and welcome to another episode of Implant Pokemon. Um, on today's episode I'm going to do a little bit of talking and then we'll uh, get into a match here. Um, I got a message on YouTube asking why I haven't done a video in a while. And uh, the reason why I hadn't done a video in a while is because I was missing so many cards and uh, the trade feature uh, wasn't up yet. So I was missing basic cards um, in the last format, Heart Gold, Soul Silver on. Things like Energy Switch were just completely not played cards. So a lot of trainers I kind of just traded away for things like um, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Energy, and things like that. So I actually only had one Energy Switch, which pretty much limits. Um, there's so many decks that without that card you really can't play them. Things like. Uh, yeah, to a lesser extent, Garboder, um, things like uh, Darkrai Terrakion, which really need four energy switch. Really kind of Darkrai with anybody uh, needs energy switch. Um, and that was just like one example. Um, there's plenty of other cards that I just didn't have a play set of and couldn't play. Um, even something as simple as uh, an electric deck. Um, I opened, gosh, I don't know, 150 packs of Dark Explorers and never pulled a Raikou EX. And, uh, you know, it's kind of hard for me to want to play a subpar deck um, missing cards like that. So trading is up now, and uh, now I can start to build competitive decks and fun decks. And so that's kind of the reason why I've been gone for a while. Just slowly waiting for trading to come so that I can uh, bring the best videos I can. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the deck manager here. And uh, I'm going to start the new season, I guess we'll call it a season, with uh, a fun deck. Now this was kind of inspired by a contest or a deck challenge over at Six Prizes. I believe it's called the Bronzong Chef Challenge. And uh, the challenge was to build a deck with where your attacker is a stage one colorless Pokemon. So I'm not actually part of that. Uh, my kid is though. So something we kind of discuss and uh, I really like for the specific challenge, Chinchino with Do the Wave. Uh, this was released in black and white, and uh, a year ago this was really, really good, and now it's not really good at all, but uh, it's still a fun card. So Chinchino, 90 HP, means it's searchable by level ball, and its attack do the way for two colorless does 20 damage times the number of your benched Pokemon. Um, so we need a bunch of benched Pokemon to make this work. Uh, Emolga is pretty much a no-brainer, free retreat, gives you some consistency at the beginning of the game, and uh, can't really be donked. And then obviously, um, Next Destiny's brought us a new Minchino with the Call for Family attack, search for basic Pokemon. So we have eight Pokemon that uh, really all of our opening Pokemon, all eight of them, uh, are consistency cards. So that really helps out. Then we have the Aerodactyl, who has his ability Ancient Scream. Your Pokemon's attacks do 10 more damage to the active Pokemon. So if an Aerodactyl's on the bench, um, it's going to give some extra power to do the wave. And it's not a competitive deck, but it, mm, I still want to build it right so it actually has a chance of winning here. Um, so we'll start with our items for level ball here. Pretty much everything, not pretty much everything in our deck is searchable. Everything has less than 90 HP, so kind of a no-brainer for of. Uh, Old Amber, Aerodactyl, look at the bottom seven cards of your deck. If there's an Aerodactyl there, you can put it on the bench. Obviously for catcher. So why wouldn't you play Forecatcher? Uh, random Receiver, we really kind of want an aggressive start, so I opted for more Random Receiver to try and hit into those uh, ends and Junipers on the first and second turn uh, to kind of get things going and overwhelm our opponent, because that's the only way we're going to win. A couple Super Rods, because um, at times we're going to have to be aggressive with Juniper and Ultra Ball, and then obviously we're going to get knocked out very easily. Um, so two su Super Rods seems like the play. Uh, moving on to our supporter line, very standard, 4 Juniper, 4 N, 2 Charon, so we have 10 supporters, 3 random receivers. Um, I would prefer another draw card or another random receiver, but I haven't played enough to really figure out what I'd want to cut for that. 3 Twist Mountain, again this is to get Aerodactyl into play. Once during each player's turn, flip a coin. If heads, you get to put a restored Pokemon, in this case Aerodactyl, onto the bench. So this sort of uh, increases our odds of getting Aerodactyls onto the bench. Uh, went with 8 Lightning Energy. Uh, it really doesn't matter what kind of energy you pick. I really should just pick one of each because it would be funny and keep our opponent guessing. But 
Amoga has an attack that costs a lightning, so everything else in the deck is colorless. Uh, even Aerodactyl has a decent attack, uh, 3 for 40, which is really 3 for 50 because of Ancient Scream. And if you have more Aerodactyls in play, it starts to become uh, a little bit better, especially against a fighting weak metagame. And then obviously 4 double colorless because that is the perfect amount of damage for Chinchino. So, uh, hope you enjoy this intro and a quick look at this deck, and uh, what we will follow up with is uh, a pretty quick basic game showing how this deck actually works uh, uh, in practice. So let's go ahead and get started with the battle portion of this video. And I'm going to get uh, an Amolga start, and uh, I do have two energy in hand, which is really helpful. Um, I've got a the yellow energy, obviously, the lightning energy, and a double colorless for the next turn. So I'm not going to get stuck in an awkward spot where I attach to a Molga and then can attack with Chinchino on the second turn. So that kind of just eliminates that whole problem. Um, my opponent here is not really playing a competitive deck, but uh, I just kind of wanted to get this up, uh, test some new recording. Hopefully you hear that the uh, in-game sounds are actually quite good. Um, I'm recording those direct from the game instead of just letting the sound bleed into the recording. So uh, hopefully that adds a little more quality to the video. But we're going to see my opponent here is going to start with a Rayquaza, which can do 40 for one energy. It's also got a Basculin on the bench that can do 40 for one energy. And uh, that's kind of the strategy of his deck here. But I'm going to get uh, a couple Chinchinos, I'm sorry, Minchinos on the bench here. And uh, hopefully we can kind of start doing some work here uh, on turn two. But he's going to be able to, and he plays in the interviewer's questions, which was a bad card back then and is still a bad card, even though it's not legal anymore. So if I were him, I would be putting that water on the Basculin and going with my strategy. But we see he's going to attach to the active here, hoping for a turn three shred, which will chew right through my chinchinos here. Um, so, I attach the double colorless. I do get a Chinchino, double colorless, and everything on turn two, which is excellent. Um, unfortunately, uh, I don't really have any more, that many basics to put on the bench here, so I'm stuck doing just, uh, just 60 damage, which isn't really that great. So I'll do the wave. Uh, we'll get halfway there here, but he's gonna get another knockout on his third turn. And, um, we're just starting to get started here, so... I suspect he'll attach an energy to the active. He plays Twist Mountain for no apparent reason. I somehow doubt he plays Aerodactyl. And we'll see what he does here. He's going to lay down a Shinx. Now, Luxray also has, uh, that's the uh, stage two, also has an attack that does 60 for one energy. So that's kind of his strategy here. Unfortunately, he's not really, and I'll fail Twist Mountain. Unfortunately, he's not really going with that strategy. He's not spreading his energy around. So I'm going to go ahead and play Old Amber Aerodactyl, and we do reveal an Aerodactyl on our bottom seven cards, which is excellent. So right now I'm swinging for 70, trying to a couple level balls, which is really great as well to, to search out those Chinchinos and uh, sort of claw our way back into this game. So uh, Amolga, free retreat, also really good. And we can kind of see what this deck was designed to do. Uh, hit early and uh, <laughs> hope that the game doesn't go into a late game because we have no answers for pretty much the entire metagame. So I'm going to go ahead and do 70, which will take out the Rayquaza. And now he's left with two basic Pokemon and uh, he can't really do any damage to me. Alrighty. So he's going to play Professor Elm. Another card that's not legal, but whatever. It really doesn't matter. I don't really think anything in this game matters, unfortunately. So he's going to play an Elm. That's his supporter for the turn. It's going to get himself a Luxray. And evolve into the Stage 1. Now, Basculin, if I had damage counters on me, would be doing 40, which would be good. Unfortunately, I have no damage counters on me. And uh, he'll only be able to do 10 damage, which uh, isn't enough. All I need is one more basic, and I can take out the Basculin. So, uh, let's see here. I have a pretty decent hand. I'm going to attach the lightning to Aerodactyl just in case I have to retreat it, or just in case uh, I want to attack with it. Uh, Luxray is weak to fighting. Aerodactyl does have uh, a somewhat useful attack when you're 
facing something that's weak to you. I believe I whiff on the Twist Mountain again, uh, which is unfortunate. And uh, I'm out of Chinchinos, I'm, or Minchinos, I must have one prized. Two are in the discard, because he's knocked out two. But I do get another uh, Aerodactyl into play, thanks to Old Amber Aerodactyl. Been getting pretty lucky with that versus Twist Mountain, if I'm honest. So now I'm swinging for 120, just like that, and we are fully set up. Don't really see a way for him to deal with all of this, short of uh, some sort of paralysis stall, catcher stall, things like that. And judging on his deck, I don't really think he plays those cards, but I've been wrong before. So I'm just clicking around here for no apparent reason, waiting for him to do something. He's going to drop an Articuno, which I do believe has a paralyzed attack uh, for water and two colorless, does some damage. I'm desperately... There's a Galventula. Galventula and Joltik are terrible 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 cards and don't really seem to go with the strategy of the deck at all which is one energy attacks and uh, I think he's just gonna let's see here he does get his Lux Luxray into play here and we'll see if he has the lightning energy he only has one card and uh, it looks like he just decides to concede <laughs> So I'm all set up, ready to go, and that's kind of how this deck works. So kind of a fun deck, uh, was able to trade for Aerodactyls and uh, all the other cards that I needed to make this kind of deck work, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video.